one participant in the attendees. That's a little. Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Tommy Khan. Um, this is uh, the 10 core requirements for an enterprise CMP in 2019 webinar. We're very excited to have you all here today. Just so that everybody knows, we will be recording this webinar so that we can send it off to you afterwards if you'd like to hear it again. Or for those that couldn't join, we will also be make sure to send that off to you as well. Um, secondly, if you have any questions throughout today's webinar, uh, please feel free to add them in the chat feature here. I'll just say hi so that everyone knows that or you might see a little Q&A button um, within the webinar itself so that you can go ahead and ask any of your questions there. I do want to let everyone know I do not think this is going to take the full hour. Um, I hopefully will be able to uh, get this done somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes which should give you some time back on your calendars today. Um, so with that being said I'm going to go ahead and take down my video and share my screen with you guys um, and then we will uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So let me share my screen with you now. Hopefully you guys should be able to see that. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So again, my name is Tommy Khan. I'm a senior solutions consultant at NewsCred. Uh, I've led conversations with both prospects and customers about CMP software solutions and how they can fit within their MarTech stack and build better performing teams. Prior to NewsCred, I worked at a commercial real estate tech startup known as uh, VTS or View the Space um, as a sales operations manager, uh, product uh, marketer, and head of training for global clients. So I have experience in SaaS platforms, content marketing, personalization, CRM, and change management. I'm also going to do a quick NewsCred introduction, but we'll be keeping this webinar holistically focused on the core requirements for an enterprise content marketing platform solution in 2019. So uh, NewsCred has been around since 2008, and we have offices in New York, London, and Bangladesh. Uh, NewsCred works with enterprise companies by offering three types of solutions. Number one, a content marketing platform to plan, collaborate, publish, manage, and measure the effectiveness of all content. Uh, number two, we have a scalable content creation solution that offers both licensed and original content. And lastly, number three, uh, we have professional services to help create a successful content marketing program. But let's go ahead and jump in to uh, today's uh, agenda here. Um, so a content marketing platform, or CMP as I'm going to be referring to it today, has become a mandate for enterprise marketing teams looking to centralize their content planning, governance, and execution. After all, most marketing output is in the form of content, and content drives the, the modern customer experience. And one of NewsCred's predictions for 2019 is that the once siloed content marketing function will integrate with the rest of their organization to create collaborative, cross-functional marketing teams that deliver great content experiences. But how can you navigate the differences between platforms and solutions in a sea of leaders and number one platforms? In this webinar, we'll share the core requirements for our CMP, taking into account recommendations from both Forrester and Gartner. So this is an educational session and we'll focus on the tools to compare platforms and ask the right questions about finding a tool to help your teams work better together and produce better performing marketing content. Just so you guys know, along the way, I will also try to share the most frequently asked questions by marketing leaders uh, during the CMP sales process so that you guys can make sure that you're, you're covering all of your bases there. Okay, so why are we here? What's a CMP and the industry trends making a CMP a valuable part of the MarTech stack? Well, first, there's often a little confusion about a CMP versus a CMS. So let's clear that up and then we'll go on from there. So your marketing program is going to need both. They're, they are not a replacement for each other. A CMS is really focused on adding, editing, or deleting content that is to be published on a website or hub, and it's not specific to helping marketers e easily strategize, plan, collaborate, analyze, you know, all of the above. So first things first, for those unsure of what exactly content marketing platforms are, Forrester defines them as solutions that help marketing teams do the following. Number one, they help them collaborate on a content strategy. Number two, uh, they actually help orchestrate the numerous concurrent streams of activity by content creators, 
um, curators and distributors inside and outside of the company. And lastly, uh, they help optimize downstream cross-channel distributions to key audiences. So you'll see here that we've streamlined that definition at NewsCred, which um, you know, is pretty straightforward, I think. Next, I want to set up some industry context for why a CMP will be important to your marketing organization in 2019. The first couple stats I'm going to move through are these concerning trends about how marketing organizations are operating. So number one right here, 34 billion in digital ad spend was wasted in 2017. I mean, it's a massive amount. And next, according to Serious Decisions, 65% of the content that marketing teams produce is wasted. That is a ton. So this is kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting stat, I think. According to the Gartner Magic Quadrant for content marketing platforms, by 2021, the term content marketing will be defunct as all marketing content rises to high quality expectations of attention limited audiences. So I'm gonna pause on this slide because it's a key prediction that frames up a lot of capabilities we're about to walk through. Although the technology is called a content marketing platform, we're really seeing the rise of solutions for marketing content and not what we really traditionally think of as a siloed content marketing team. All of these trends really boil down to the fact that marketing organizations have a lack of centralized visibility into planning and execution. And this leads to waste, inefficiency, and worst of all, just suboptimal customer experiences. So this is where a CMP can really help marketers take back control over the customer experience and continue their digital transformations in 2019. That's why the tech capabilities I'm about to share mirror what we're calling the integrated marketing maturity curve and milestones. So you may call it omnichannel or another term, but integrated marketing is the process of unifying the marketing organization to deliver a content experience for their audience that is consistent and relevant across all channels. Why integrated marketing in the CMP? Well, there's a lot of research showing the brand value of delivering more unified customer experiences. According to Kantar Millard Brown, Integrated marketing campaigns are 31% more effective at building brands. And now, more than ever, technology is what's making true integrated marketing possible. So that curve that I showed you just a second ago was based upon five core capabilities of effective integrated marketing. That was alignment, design, execution, process, and technology. And that's what we're going to walk through now. There's 10 key capabilities to check for when deciding to employ a CMP. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just dive right in. All right, number one, centralized planning. Here we jump into the core challenge facing both marketing leadership and more tactical players. That's real-time planning. We hear over and over that marketers are in too many meetings and spending too much time looking for spreadsheets and, and then updating those spreadsheets and using desperate marketing planning tools. Not to mention there's a lack of visibility of what other teams are working on. So for example, according to McKinsey Global Institute, the average high skill professional worker spends an estimated 28% of the work week managing email and another 19% looking for internal information. That's nearly half their week, that's insane. Using spreadsheets to communicate complex marketing plans is a disservice to the campaign. So often, this leaves the individual contributors asking questions such as, what's my role? What do I owe to whom and when? Leadership, on the other hand, they may start asking questions such as, what is the objective of this campaign? How does this align with our other initiatives? And what is the value to this business? Frankly, there's no way for either side to get clear, concise answers to these questions. And this blurry line of sight creates misalignment at the team level and an inability to ladder activity up to the bigger picture at that leadership level. So ultimately, this all leads to non-strategic marketing, poor decision making, and an inconsistent message to your audience. So a CMP solution can do the following. 
By maintaining a comprehensive view of all marketing campaigns and big rock content initiatives in one single platform, your team is able to improve strategic decision making. With visibility into all activity on a centralized calendar within a CMP, the full scope of work is on display and accessible in real time, empowering individuals to execute full campaigns or facilitate content production and distribution across various channels. This helps your entire team, including that executive level leadership, align on your marketing initiatives, and it brings everybody together in terms of all the campaigns, events, and content that you're working on. So speaking of campaigns, let's dive into what integrated campaign management looks like. Regardless of whether you call your marketing strategy campaigns or integrated marketing or omni-channel, there's no way to align teams around one big idea, insight, or message without collaborative campaign planning tools. When evaluating a CMP, you need to think about what your teams need to begin and maintain successful integrated marketing campaigns. Think about your priorities for campaign management. Common needs should include the following. Number one, budgeting. Number two, campaign sharing because marketing workflows don't always stay in marketing silos. Um, for example, it's a, a campaign development or execution may require supply chain or, or legal approval activities from outside the marketing team. And it can be difficult to have those legal teams uh, work within the CMP. Uh, number three, nested campaigns where divisions ladder up to larger global projects. Uh, number four, templates for repeatable campaigns and tasks. And lastly, uh, marketing work requests. So now that you have a campaign and a place to view all of your tasks in a calendar, how do you come up with the ideas for these specific pieces of content? All right, let's take a look. One of the foundational inputs to a successful integrated campaign is a unifying idea and message. And SEO, search engine optimization research, can play a big role in understanding your target customers and of course, in delivering eyeballs to your marketing content, which is what we're really going for. Here's an interesting stat that I like. With 93% with of online experiences beginning with search, perfecting the SEO ideation and planning process is key to content marketing success. One area that platform intelligence will really help marketers in 2019 is with key, keyword research. You want your SEO tools to be usable by people across your organization, regardless of their training on technical or editorial SEO. It should just be simple. When a content creation team will be using a CMP, you should look for ways it can make SEO easy for even non-trained users. Some features you should look for include the following. Keyword recommendations. Here's one area, here's one area platform intelligence very, is very helpful. You want to expand and refine your topics within keyword recommendations, and you want to make sure that that ensures your content addresses the related concepts that are searchable uh, by your audience. You also want to make sure you can get real-time insight into your organic content wins and misses that your brand is working to own, and discover gaps in your existing content to target the right keywords in your metadata. Speaking of metadata, let's take a deeper dive into metadata and taxonomy. All right, this capability is important for both internal organization and analytics, as well as customer facing personalization efforts. It might be second nature to bring in content strategists or information architects to design your website or content marketing hubs taxonomy. But too often, none of the same care is given to your asset management system or your program content or your marketing plans. Sure, there might be several rows of attributes on marketing plan spreadsheet, um, but is your whole marketing organization speaking the same language? And are you tagging the attributes needed for valuable audience insights from analytics? Are you future-proofing your program to deliver new levels of personalization? Taxonomy is a classification method that makes order out of all that chaos. So metadata, the labels and the tagging part of a taxonomy 
helps support customizations and recommendations like the seemingly mind reading Spotify Discover Weekly. And if no one knows what I'm talking about when I say Spotify Discover Weekly, Spotify somehow is able to guess at the songs that you have been listening to and that other ones that you like as well. So it's, it's kind of creepy and amazing that way. And marketing is about to explode with more chaos as personalization algorithms evolve and gain sophistication. And as consumers grow to expect these personalized experiences as status quo. Here are the symptoms of a poor meta metadata strategy. Number one, wasted time searching for approved assets. Number two, email chains and content attachments galore. Number three, spreadsheets, specifically different teams keeping different plans, different tags, and different spreadsheets. Lastly, one size fits all content analytics reporting without easily available segmentation by target audience, topic, format, or any other key information. If you're not using a CMP currently, a lot of these challenges probably sound familiar. Your marketing program needs to have a common language. And that language needs to be carried throughout your tech stack as metadata. You might not be seeing all these cracks from lack of metadata strategy right now, but long term, you will. The most sophisticated and successful content strategies utilize metadata to segment content into the atoms or dynamic component, components that Gartner believes will be key to competitive real time customer experience across all channels. Labels and metadata are critical to auditing and allocating against these segmentation needs. So according to Gartner's predictions, organizations that excel in personalization will outsell companies that don't by about 20%. And a CMP should make it easy to govern and utilize marketing taxonomy. All right, let's jump over to number five, flexible workflows. Building a holistic workflows is a key component of more efficient marketing organization. A key point is that CMPs are no longer only for content marketing teams. They can be used to plan, execute, manage, or measure all marketing content, be it ads, emails, trade show booth designs, graphics, videos, or articles. Your CMP workflow should be able to take into account different asset types and approvals along with roles and responsibilities and distribution channels. You also want the ability to develop non-content workflows where components of a project can be tracked and approved without needing to publish or distribute a step. At NewsCred, for example, marketing project management takes place in workflows for product marketing, content marketing, and demand generation. Within the CMP, you, your defined production processes should take into account legal and other regulatory practices and include clear timelines and approvals. Now that we've discussed calendars, campaigns, ideation, metadata, and workflows, we now need to discuss how this will integrate with your other systems that you already employ. So let's jump into tech integrations. The NewsCred methodology for integrated marketing maturity emphasizes the importance of an integrated tech stack. Now, every tech stack is going to be unique to your organization and will require different scoping and elimination of redundancies. Honestly, the best place to start is with, key, with, is with stakeholder surveys and mapping of your tech stacks across different silos and teams. What data is being tracked and which platforms and what programs are being used for what. You can then begin to bucket your mark tech stack and which is really important, more like a, which is really more like a, a Martech pile for more so organizations. And then you can actually bucket that all together into those functional categories. The categories where you really want to think about uh, CMP integration are the following according to Gartner's magic quadrant. So number one, lead management or multi-channel marketing. For example, uh, Marketo or Oracle Alcor, or Pardot and HubSpot. Number two, uh, marketing analytics, like Adobe Analytics, Google Analytics, Core Metrics. Number three, CRM systems, such as Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, and Sugar CRM. Number four, sales enablement, uh, Brainshark, HighSpot, and Seismic are some good examples. Number five, uh, SEO or content intelligence tools, such as Bright Edge, uh, Buzzumo, SEM Rush, uh, SEO Clarity. 
And uh, lastly, social publishing, such as Hootsuite, Sprinkler, Spreadfast, Hearsay, and Sysimos. What should you know about integrations to ask the right questions about your tech stack and the CMP? Well, here are a couple of uh, examples for that. You should probably ask what out of box or native APIs versus feeds means for integrations. Uh, what type of technical support, whether that be onboarding and ongoing, will your team receive to ensure smooth integration, integrations and usage? Um, what native integrations are on the product roadmap? And you definitely want to make sure to ask, are you currently distributing a content newsletter or pushing content regularly to social? Seamless integrations helps you produce content more efficiently. It reduces human error and helps produce real business results. That being said, it's important to have the right governance over your systems to ensure consistency across your organization. So let's dive into that. This is all about ensuring you're presenting a unified brand to your audience, regardless of who created the asset. Your CMP should be set up with clear roles and functionality levels so admins can set up approved briefs and share approved content with the right teams. You wanna make sure that you have the ability to partition the system, roles, and workflows by distinct programs that may be separated based upon a business unit, geography, or other dividing lines. Enabling a brand to use a single system to roll up all content operations while still allowing sub teams to function independently. For effective governance, you want to ensure that workflows and governance rules are highly configurable. Global teams should be able to work locally and with agency partners, and senior leadership should be able to have access rolled up strategic insights of their team's distributed efforts. Another component of this capability is content storage, or DAM, Digital Asset Manager. You want to have a central bank or library for assets and the ability to share and repurpose these items across teams. Features to look for via Gartner include the following. Repository and library services features, for example, create, retrieve, update, and delete. Uh, metadata and taxonomy management, like we mentioned a little bit earlier. Search and guided navigation features. Life cycle and rights management capabilities. Access and identity management. Asset editing, manipulation, and transcoding. Many legacy DAM solutions were not built with content marketing in mind. They function as a repository of archived material and not the living, breathing resource centers that marketers need to create a vibrant, content-driven experience. So it's important to find systems with a repository that can help repurpose and archive materials efficiently. Now moving on to number eight, content curation and sourcing. This falls into two categories. So we've got content curation and content sourcing. This capability is all about efficiency and scaling. According to Gartner, content curation within a CMP means the ability to ingest, assess, and suggest relevant user-generated or existing published third-party content with appropriate rights management and moderation. This means replacing any existing stock photography or other rights cleared content sources you have outside the platform. For NewsGrid customers, using the CMP also means thousands of syndicated articles from leading publishers available for curation and immediate publication to hubs and newsletters. Licensed content is an efficient, scalable way to build authority for your hub and compete for attention at the top of the funnel. Gartner notes that many CMP providers, like NewsGrid, also offer talent network access. These resources enable content marketing leaders to augment in-house staff via, via scalable staff managed through their existing tool sets and editorial processes. As more teams move to in-house models, building a freelance talent network can be a huge support system and can help produce higher quality assets with less resources producing higher performance. Speaking of performance, let's discuss the digital marketing performance analytics. Content engagement, oh, excuse me. Uh, all marketers know that data-driven learnings are key to getting an edge on the competition. And if your organization is like most these days, 
you don't have a streamlined way of pulling your data into a detailed retrospective that offers a full unbiased and complete picture for your executive review. Content engagement analytics should tell you what formats, channels, and topics are resonating with your audience. Getting the full picture on engagement can take some digging, but it's key to keeping visitors moving down the funnel towards conversion and return on investment. We are now in an era of performance content marketing. Simply showing page views and likes as program results won't secure next year's budget. Unfortunately, engagement metrics often come from platforms designed for analyzing web traffic versus content, and these metrics are easily misinterpreted. As a result, many content marketers have blind spots in their analytics insights. We break down analytics into the following buckets for content programs. Number one, traffic. Producing, promoting, and distributing content across channels and driving people to a content hub. Number two, engagement. Understanding the optimal formats, channels, and topics for each type of content and focusing on those areas. And specifically, how much time a user spends engaging with the content. Actions. Converting visitors to leads and then to customers. And number four, lastly, monetization. Connecting metrics to real business outcomes. We believe content marketing analytics programs also needs a type of action analytics view where you track behavioral actions that users are taking on content. For NewsGrid, we track new signups to the newsletter, new signups to insights, and even logins to the platform. These are behaviors that are hugely valuable to how we attribute leads to our NewsGrid content marketing efforts. But the buyer journey doesn't just happen on one platform or channel. So to measure content marketing ROI, all the way through the buyer journey, look for a CRM and automation integrations with your tech stack. By linking a content marketing platform to those systems, you should be able to attribute leads and content influence revenue to specific pieces of content. Summing up the CMP solution for content analytics, your CMP should cover everything from first touch engagement to closed one attribution and every influential touch point in between. Ultimately, your entire marketing organization, including team members without robust analytics platform knowledge, should have the tools to easily measure ROI of marketing content and use that data to inform future campaign planning. Operational analytics. Although this may not be the pinnacle you'd expect us to end a capabilities webinar on, we really believe that operational analytics are the hidden backbone of a strong, efficient, and effective marketing organization. But it's not about squashing creativity or making teams do more with less. It's really about visibility. One of the top questions we hear from marketing leaders is, how do I know my teams are working on the right thing? Your CMP should help ensure all the time and cost involved in creating assets is being measured and monitored to ensure operational efficiency. Features to look for are real-time productivity and performance metrics, progress indicators for campaigns and commenting streams that highlight the contributions and collaboration among your teams. Operational analytics and integrated marketing really go hand in hand. By taking steps to improve efficiency metrics, you're going to be inherently improving collaboration and integration with your marketing organization. Operational analytics are all about fixing misaligned processes and bottlenecks so that all your teams are clearly aligned and moving forward together. So that wraps up the CMP uh, capabilities, the top 10 you should be looking for in 2019. Of course, this was not a complete list of all CMP features, but they are the features that will be key to building more integrated, collaborative marketing teams in 2019. Next, I will quickly wrap up with key takeaways and answer any questions that have come in. So integrated marketing, possible now more than ever because of technology like a CMP, is the solution to many of the challenges facing marketers today. The old established marketing models have broken down. There's mounting revenue pressure and scrutiny on marketing investments, and there's a laser focus on minimizing risk and maintaining security, especially in the new era of GDPR. But delivering a truly integrated customer experience can only happen when marketing teams are working cross-functionally rather than competing for budgets and glory. 
That's where collaborative, centralized tech like CMP comes in. So no two marketing organizations are identical. You are definitely going to need to do a stakeholder research to figure out your tech stack integration needs and gap areas. But joining us today was a great first step towards building a more integrated marketing organization. I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. I know this was a lot of tech talk to process, so please feel free to reach out at webinar at newscred.com if you have any follow-ups. We also have the rest of the time to answer any questions that you have. Um, you should see a Q&A option at the bottom of your screen here, so please feel free to ask any questions that you might have, and I really do appreciate everyone uh, for joining today. Okay, um, just getting um, one question in right now. Sorry, just coming in. Can you talk a little bit more about the setup that goes into the campaign analytics? Um, for the setup of campaign analytics, well, would you mind being a little bit more specific in, in your question, just so that I can understand that a little bit more thoroughly? Um, is it is it set up for that you will need to do in order to understand the campaign analytics? So, Will, as you're typing that up, I'm going to kind of take a stab at what I think you might um, be referring to there. Um, so, so basically, in terms of um, campaign analytics, there's kind of two ways of looking at it. There's the operational side, and then there's the performance side. From the performance side, you want to make sure that you understand exactly um, all of the engagement metrics that uh, would ladder up to the content for that specific campaign. So how customizable is it? Okay, I'm seeing, for instance, we're increasingly setting measurement hypotheses for our clients rather than passively using existing KPI. Yes, all right, so KPIs, excuse me, yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, the customizable part can be around certain actions um, for measuring performance. Um, you can actually see what content has actually produced um, a specific action versus finding uh, that, you know, another part of your, for example, if you're trying to understand how many email signups have we had um, in total this year via uh, the content that you produced versus your website, you can actually set that up. Um, so you should definitely be looking at that from that perspective. You should also be thinking, uh, in addition to that, uh, how long does it actually take you to produce certain pieces of content? This is going more towards the operational side. So working on um, actually increasing the, the efficiency of your workflows. You can do that by teams. You can do that by individuals as well. Similar to GA events, you can assign, you can assign meaning to say time on site, like a user who reads an article for four minutes is a valuable top of the funnel visitor. Yes. Yeah, so um, you know, well, I'm going to relate this back to NewsCred to give you more of a specific example. We have the actual ability of measuring how much time an actual user has spent on a page. So what do I mean by that? You, you refer to GA or for everyone who's listening, Google Analytics. Google Analytics really tells you, you know, time on site, well, as you kind of just uh, pinpointed. And, and just to kind of pause here for a second, Miles, I saw your question. I'm coming back to that, I promise. Um, so, well, so it's time on site, right? That means that, you're, you know, when you've actually clicked on an article, someone's, you're reading it, and then let's say all of a sudden you open up your email, Google Analytics is still going to tell you that you're on the page. So those four minutes that you just referred to, may not actually be four minutes. It might actually be one minute, and then they've actually been looking at their email the entire time. What we do at NewsCred is we're actually able to tell you how much time a person has spent on the page by the mouse movements and the scrolling up and down on the page. So you can actually really get nitty gritty into how much time people are spending reading the content. So if you were reading it, your mouse was moving, you're scrolling, and then you jump to your email, we act like a stopwatch in the sense that we actually pause that time and then you can actually come back to it and the time will pick up again. Um, so hopefully that answers from, uh, from a GA perspective. Um, but if you're also asking um, about like assigning goals to campaign KPIs and GA, yes, your platform should be helping you track against campaign KPIs like that as well. 
Okay, great. Uh, Miles, coming back up to yours, how would you articulate the difference between CMPs and resource allocation and project planning platforms like a work front? Do you need both? It's a really, really good question, Miles. Honestly, um, and I know you're probably going to roll your eyes when I say this slightly, um, you don't have to act like I really have both. You can have both. It really all depends. Um, so I just want to make sure that you know that. Like I know, I know that the pens answers. It, it kind of really what fits with your organization. So I would I would say that a CMP um, differs um, from uh, a resource and allocation project management and, and a project planning platform in one key distinction. Um, usually, like a work front, um, don't have the capabilities of actually um, publishing any content. So you've produced it, you've managed it, um, it's, it's ready, but now you have to take it out of that system and then transfer it over to a CMS uh, or taking it um, from that system and maybe moving it to another publishing uh, you know, sort of part, which is the execution side of it, right? So a CMP really actually allows for not only the project management of all of it, but then the publishing as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned sort of in the beginning, like to your second question, like, do you need both? Sometimes you do. Sometimes you might want to have um, different things for just project management. Um, maybe it's for putting on conferences um, and you might need, uh, a, you know, something more that's going towards your site and to social. So we've, we have clients here at NewsCred that use both Workfront and NewsCred. We have clients that have switched from, um, you know, different resource allocation project planning platforms to just using ours. Um, but it, it honestly really depends on um, on the organization so miles hopefully that answers your question if you um, if you want to follow up please please let me know um, but yeah just getting those so far uh, any other questions coming through Is that true for a dam system as well? Do you need both? Um, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, we are finding, and I think Gartner and Forrester, um, I'm not trying to speak for them, but it, I think they would probably say that more and more people uh, are using uh, CMPs as a way for managing a lot of their, uh, a lot of their resources. Um, dam systems definitely have um, you know, a lot of great capabilities to managing um, all of your different content. Um, do you need both? Again, it, it really does matter um, in terms of what kind of content you're trying to produce and where everyone is going to look for it. So if you have a damn system and not everyone has access to that, you might really, um, you know, you might really think about well, well, I want everyone to have access to my dam, or I want everyone to have access to this project management tool, and you know, a CMP is really going to solve that answer. So, I know Priscilla is probably not necessarily the the answer you were really looking for, but it really it really does your depend on your organization or what makes sense. Um, we are starting to see that you know um, some people are just switching over to CMPs and others are kind of using both or integrating them. So it, again, it just, it really does depend. All right, well, I'm not seeing any other questions come through right now. I really wanna thank everybody for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I hope you guys found this educational and informative. Please let us know if you have any questions. Again, it's webinar at newscred.com if you wanna follow up with any questions. We have recorded this webinar, so I can definitely uh, share this with everyone who joined today. And if some of your colleagues missed out, we can definitely share it with them as well. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Bye now.